Good afternoon, everyone. As winter storm Wilbur rolled across North America, breaking thousands and thousands of snow records, cold records as well, more blizzards are on the way. Arctic ice almost back to normal. Doesn't look like it's the warmest year ever at 0.24 over baseline, not even a quarter of one degree. First week of April, uh, temperatures 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. As I said, more blizzards on the way around April 15th or so. This is the snow cover expected up to April 13th. Long range forecast, cold, 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 right across our growing belts. This takes us into May 4th, still below normal temperatures. And if you thought it was just exclusively the United States or Europe, now I got April snowstorms in Saudi Arabia. That's truly unthinkable. Snow-covered fields across Canada. When we talk about losses in crops, the green is the area we grow today. We know the stability of the temperature. If there's a one degree Celsius drop, that green shrinks into the aqua blue. If it drops two degrees Celsius, the entire wheat production of Canada shrinks into that dark blue on the right. So when we take a look at how much cold is happening because of the sunspot cycle matching up with the 1970s being exceptionally cold, what happens when we go back to zero like we did in the 1640s? And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030 and click that bell so you can get the latest updates. Now, since the beginning of April, all we've had is below normal temperatures, below normal temperatures, record snow, below normal temperatures, record cold across most of North America, except where the Maunder minimum matches with Alaska being warmer. This last winter storm, Wilbur, they're almost out of letters now. So when these next couple blizzards roll across later on in the month, they're going to actually run out of letters and go to Z, and they'll have to probably come back to double A or something. Winter storm, Wilbur, if you hadn't been paying attention, thousands and thousands and thousands of snow record, all-time record snows in places that it's snowy anyway and are renowned for snow. You know, places like Minneapolis, St. Paul, and just icy conditions throughout the winter, but it's coming into the spring. They shouldn't be getting into the top five again of snow. Omaha breaking records back to 1899, low temperature records. There are just so many more. But I wanted to focus on the Arctic ice as well, increasing back to almost normal. Now, see, the media is trying to get into this full-on damage control mode because the Arctic temperatures are still cooler than normal, the ice is now in this season where it should be melting more is actually increasing. So something has just flipped in the poles as well. And please don't buy that excuse that CO2 is now causing more ice in the Arctic. If you believe that, we were fed for 40 years that the Arctic was warming because we were warming it with CO2. And now they're trying to flip the narrative to say CO2 causes more ice. If you can't see the bait and switch, Taking a look at Dr. Roy Spencer's University of Alabama Huntsville satellite temperature, lower troposphere, not even one quarter of one degree above baseline. And you can clearly see that we are going to be cooling as well through this. So that should be dropping through when we get these April temperatures, expect a drop from that. What's the media going to tell you when it comes back down to baseline again? It's not above the average temperatures for the satellite record. Oh, they're probably going to have to make something up and try to go back to the younger driest period or something to prove warming. The first weeks of April, 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. The United States, North America as well. Now, we saw the same thing in Europe, the European super freeze. They had two super freezes, one in March and this last one tapering into April. The UK got snow, unbelievable. Scotland with several inches. Sheep and livestock dying from the cold stuck in the snow, yet it's the warmest year ever. Now, Ryan Maui, as always, putting out the amazing charts for us to read he has blizzards on the way. Now, this forecast came out on April 4th, so nine more days. It's going to be coming around the 13th to the 15th. A blizzard. Now, you understand that we already lost 80% of the winter wheat crop 
and how it grows, it's coming back out now, but it's gonna get absolutely frozen out. So the winter wheat crop in the United States this year is gonna be tumultuous at best coming into the silos. Look for a drive on that for sure in the futures prices. This blizzard is going to be followed by a second blizzard later on in the month as well. So looking at this type of snow totals coming out into April 13th. This is before the blizzard starts. And I said, wow, that's a lot of snow. I wonder what it looks like in Canada. So I widened it out and then I looked and said, whoa, look how much is up in Greenland. So these are the North American snow totals expected through the 13th before this blizzard starts. Got the arc storms over in California, dropping more rain, three to five inches, flooding. I get reports all the time of damage crops out in California. These temperature swings are incredible. Crops are not having it out there. Leafy vegetables and lettuces, not playing that game. Look for a rise in your price on veggies or just unavailability. And they'll have a little sign in your supermarket that says due to inclement weather or something, this fresh produce is not available. And you could probably substitute, due to the grand solar minimum, this vegetable is not available. And Big Joe Bastardi also coming out, giving us a forecast of the cast up to April 13th and the 14th. You can see the progression and the 15th and how that cold mass is going to just sling through the center of the U.S. again. There's a great forecast here, 16 days, so you can go through the progression of each individual day by the date. This will take us out through the 24th of April. And what do you see down at the bottom right in this? Oh, I still see cold in the center of the United States. Delayed planting and whatever's budding and fruiting, bye-bye. And again, there's going to be more snow with this, more wind, more cold records broken. And then after that blizzard passes, there's supposed to be another front behind it, dropping more snow all the way out until the 21st. And you can see the totals here that that additional second storm is going to bring. That's going to bring us down to what? W, X, Y. That'll bring us to the Y. And then at the end of the month, we're going to have another blizzard. And that is going to bring you to the Z storms. So looking out 25 days from now, still looking at cooler than normal temperatures. Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, what's that, West Virginia, Tennessee. Then maybe we can get some crops in the ground, but it's going to be a short season because these same types of anomalous early snows are going to return. So this is what I can consider the first year of in your face. Our crops are starting to be now hindered by the grand solar minimum intensification. And if you thought it was just the U.S. and Canada and Europe that was having these anomalous weather events with cold, we could also add in Australia with the early snows this season a couple of weeks ago. But now we have an April snowstorm covering parts of Saudi Arabia. I'm going to dig into this more. I have about 30 photos with this. I just sat and shook my head and said, that is absolutely impossible. The temperatures where these are supposed to be, it should be 90 degrees Fahrenheit plus at the moment. And it is snowing. This is not CO2, it is not you, it is definitely the sun. You know, this was first reported back on April 4th about mm, five days ago, but the pictures coming out now that people have been able to upload it to the social media is a tidal wave of white in the earthen walls and mosques. Now drawing on yesterday's story, this is what the fields look like in Saskatchewan. They are not anywhere close to being ready to plant. There's some more frozen field ground cover, 35 degree below normal temperatures, Alberta. This is off IceAgeNow.info, Robert Felix's site. But I want to draw your attention to this map here. The green is where we presently grow our crops with the stable growing and harvesting months that we're used to, that we've been used to for decades for a century. This is now in the process of changing. We're going to start to have to adapt to this because the one degree Celsius drop shrinks that full growing area in Alberta and Saskatchewan, Manitoba, right down into that aqua blue. And that's just a single one seed drop. A two degree Celsius drop relegates all of the wheat production of Canada into where that darker blue is 
the teardrop shape literally that says two degree Celsius drop. That's the only place in Canada they'll be able to grow wheat. Now can you imagine the drive on price in the futures market if they were to lose that much wheat production? Now this will be the same copy paste model going on over in China and the same copy paste model going on in Europe. Now this doesn't include the United States as well which will also have to move production south or just take it offline. And when you look at the news headlines today you routinely just second after second see that the cold temperatures that were just received over this last say month and a half of unusual snows, fifth nor'easter and all these uh, unusual things happening in our atmosphere and with our climate. The repeat keeps coming back to the 1970s. It was the coldest in the 70s, the 70s, the 70s snowstorms, the 1970s blizzards, the 1970s cold fronts. When you read the news, it always comes back to, oh, it's been the coldest since 1975, 74, 73. Now, when we look at our sunspot count, we take a look that it's starting to match up with something like the 1970s. We're still well above 100 sunspots for the average monthly mean. But as we move out into this grand solar minimum, we're going to go to under 25 sunspots for the average monthly mean. Now, sunspots equal temperature on our planet. And the jury is out on this. Now, will the sunspots even come back after our next solar cycle? Are we going to go an entire one or two solar cycles with zero sunspots? And if we do, you're going to understand why I do my channel. We're out of time. Our planet's population will drastically decline. We cannot produce enough food. The way we're doing it currently, growing it outdoor, will have to be shifted into some Manhattan-style project to bring everything indoors. There's just simply not going to be enough food to feed all the people on the planet. When we come down into these reduced growing time frames for our crops, you're seeing it happen right now, play out in front of you for the first year of it actually being visible. That is affecting what's going in the ground and when it comes back in the fall, when the fall starts early, we'll have confirmation of our first reduced growing season. And then keep this in mind, once you see this happen from every growing season forward, it's going to get shorter and shorter. You'll understand why the population migrated so heavily in the 1640s, 1680s, 1670s. You'll understand why 25% of the world's population perished during the modern minimum. I understand we have global shipping and just-in-time delivery, but that could be an Achilles heel. These temperature matchups are matching perfectly exactly with the anomalies we're seeing across Europe, Asia, North America. Unfortunately, I cannot find any charts for the Southern Hemisphere. But you see this matching up so succinctly, so perfectly, especially these record snows across Northwest Africa. That is an outlier that couldn't have been predicted. Yet, when we look back in history, we see it playing out in front of us today. I really hope you're getting ready because we are truly out of time. And they're still talking about global warming. And they don't want to debate the subject of what's happening with our sun driving the climate. You're on your own. Your government's not going to help you. You're going to have to learn to grow your own food. You're going to have to learn to work with your communities because you're on your own. They're not coming to help you.